Welcome to HCS Talks. I'm your host, Superintendent of Hampton City Schools, Raymond Haynes. We're just starting out a new Hampton City Schools podcast. It is designed to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain our community and beyond. We will talk about a lot of different topics related to education, students, teachers, support staff, parents, programs and initiatives, community partnerships, and more. Some of it will just be informative no matter who you are. So we hope you will stay tuned and keep listening to HCS Talks. Today I'm sitting here with Ms. Veronica Hurd, the School Division's Director for the Academies of Hampton. So first, thank you for being here. And if you don't mind, please tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So again, I'm Veronica Hurd, the director of the Academies at Hampton. But I think most importantly, I'm also a parent of Hampton City School students. And so I always steadfast in that, knowing that my young people are part of the work that I'm doing here. So I think a little bit just to peel it back a little bit more and how I'm in my role here is that twofold as I mentioned before, I'm a parent, but I'm also a believer and lover that everyone should have the opportunity to have a career identity that embodies something that they feel is the best fit for them. And so that drives my scholarly work and, of course, my professional work here as the director of the Academies of Hampton. I know you're very passionate about the work. I can yes. tell just through observations and then from the outcomes that come about as a result of your hard work in leading the Academy's model. So tell the audience about the Academies of Hampton, how it began, what is it all about, just so that if someone knows nothing about what an Academy is, it can be explained in the very simplest way, but also looking at the complexities of what it entails as it relates to the wall-to-wall aspect of the Academies. Yeah, so I think one thing, just setting the tone, many parents have already said when they've heard about the Academies, you're trying to tell my child what to be when they grow up. They barely make their bed. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Way too much, way too much credit there. I right. said, really what we're trying to do here is the goal of education is that next step, right, which happens to be career. We want young people to have a successful career for themselves and then also for our community. So with the Academies of Hampton, we're doing twofold helping young people to see themselves in careers sooner rather than later based off of what they like to do because everybody likes to do something, right? So we get to align what they like to do with the things that they're going to learn. Not only are they learning in the way that they like to learn, but also it's meaningful enough that it's helping them to develop skills sooner rather than later to then hopefully enter into those career fields um, once they leave high school or even in some instances, as we both know, some are actually doing that work now and getting paid for it. So that's a win-win. Absolutely. So in looking at that, one of the things I also found, because I'm also a parent, Mm -hmm. my, my daughter was a part of the first graduating class with the wall to wall academies it also gives young people an opportunity to see what they may not want to do as well Mm -hmm. so just talk a little bit about that from that perspective yeah i know both of us definitely have had some of these conversations (laughs) i can remember vividly being in your office with two of our young people class of 2021 getting ready to go to college (laughs) and and we're like oh i hope they know what they're doing because that's going to be costly (laughs) exactly exactly so it's basically the opportunity twofold again Um, transferable skills. So there are certain things in the industry, no matter what you're doing, that you should and should not do, right? So we know come to work on time. We know how to interact and engage with others. Um, Critical and creative thinking, these types of skill sets, no matter what academy you go into, you're going to have to have that, right? Or you have the opportunity to build that. In addition to that, when you go into career fields, you These are best practices. Uh, People say real world skills. I'm like, the ones that keep you employed, you mean, right? And so they'll take that with them no matter where they go. But a deeper layer of that, particularly in the academy model, is so if you think about ninth grade, it's all that exploratory, right? The world I see, and then based off of the world I see, I can find myself, right? So we want young people to see themselves in traditional and non-traditional spaces. Unfortunately, we have many young people that are limited to career opportunities based off of what they see um, in careers, right? And so we want them to understand all the different careers that are out there. Then they have the opportunity not only to understand those careers and the benefits of those careers and how they can move those careers forward, they then have the opportunity to learn 
in that from an academy lens in 10th grade year. I mm. hope that makes sense. So then in 10th grade, it's more exploratory again. So say ninth grade, I realized mm. I wanted to be in law enforcement. Actually, I did. Fun fact, I wanted to be a police officer, but I did find out more, and I'm obviously not a police <laughs> officer, so that's a fun fact. So, of course, um, I would have come ninth grade, learned about world of work and all this great stuff and different ways to enter into the work field. Then 10th grade, I would have went into the Law and Public Safety Academy, Law Enforcement Pathway, and it would have been exploratory, right? I would have learned about the ins and outs of law enforcement in like my English lessons, my science lessons and things of that nature. For me, I would have realized abort. <laughs> this is not <laughs> what I want to do. And then I would have had an opportunity to go into one of the different academies, which probably would have been maybe the law and legal side of the right. house, right? Which would have better fit. But, but it's the, still all under the umbrella of the law and public exactly, safety. Exactly. Exactly. And mm. so it then just peels it back. So then I have an opportunity to enter into that 11th and 12th grade year, but it starts to narrow my scope. Because now in 11th grade year, still doing English, math, science, and different content areas, I'm now having a behind-the-scenes look, right? right? So I get to go into, say, a judge's chambers and have conversations. I have, like, a job shadowing experience right. in my 11th grade year. And then 12th grade year, and particularly thanks to you, right, I might have a paid internship opportunity. So now I'm actually doing something to benefit the community that I'm serving while I'm developing a skill set. And I'm saving a little money so then I can buy some shoes or whatever the case may be for back to school, right? So that's basically kind of in a nutshell what this looks like. But again, we're not trying to set students up for the rest of their lives. I mean, how many careers do people go through in their exactly. lifetime, right? We exactly. know it's a number. But we want to build their confidence, right? So you think about that portrait of a Hampton graduate. Content knowledge, we want them to come and learn. Learn is the vessel for so many different things. So we want them to learn. We want them to have career and life skills to be powerful and to change the world and do all these great things. We want them to be able to work with each other. Mm. We need to have a conversation like we're doing now, even though I'm a little nervous. But <laughs> <laughs> we need to be able to communicate. That we collaboration. Need to, right, collaborate. Yes. Well, yes. We know that very yes. well for our, yes. all our collaboration. And then also time to lead, right? Mm. There's time to lead, but there's also time to follow mm. as well. But for me, and you know it's my favorite because I know it's your favorite too, that positive sense of yes. self and purpose, yes. right? And Absolutely. I know we just, we talk about that all the time because you are one that constantly Constantly says, I can hear you in my ear right now. Um, we have to instill hope in our young people. Absolutely. If they don't feel hopeful, then we've lost, mm -hmm. right? If we can instill and keep that hope and then nurture that hope, then the rest will come. Oh, that's very powerful, Ms. Hurd. And looking at what the Academy model brings to our young people, it just speaks volumes to us really preparing them for college career and life as a whole. So we talked about those soft skills that they need mm -hmm. to acquire, and they're acquiring that through various experiences, whether it's in the classroom or through internships or through some team building exercise or PBL showcase mm -hmm. or exercises as well. All of that leads to them getting some experiences that they probably would not have gotten in a district that does not that does not have the academy model so sounds like what we're doing is the things that they're experiencing i didn't experience until i got into college mm -hmm. and having mm -hmm. to work with folks and do group assignments and projects and being able to collaborate and communicate and recognizing when to lead and when to follow so mm -hmm. it speaks volumes to us truly preparing our young people for life after high school Absolutely. as a whole. And you mentioned that portrait of a Hampton graduate, which is sort of our, which is our North Star. Mm -hmm. And this is the promise and commitment that we've made to the community, to the young people and to the parents as well. So when they walk across that stage, that we truly keep our promise in saying that this young person is walking across the stage, receiving his or her diploma, truly being the portrait of a Hampton graduate. Yep. Yep. I remember you always asking this probing question. And you were reflecting on our young people. And we discussed, because we bump into our young people, right? right. The food line right. and the bowling alley. Sometimes I'm dodging them. Like, oh, no, right. I'm not ready right. to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is that you always say is like, if you ask that young person, did we keep your promise or did we keep our promise right. to you? We want them to say yes, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's all about is keeping our promise to our young people, but then also mobilizing them 
forward um, through this learning opportunity here where we help them to take the traditional, so they're still learning what they have to learn, right, based off of the Virginia Department of Education, but they have ownership and they're empowered by it mm -hmm. because they get to choose the lens, mm -hmm. right? They get to flavor it up with how they want to learn and we connect them with businesses and businesses connected with us to make sure it's authentic so it's not just fluff, right? right. It's truly moving and right. developing their skills forward. And you're talking about relevant and, and real life experiences, it speaks volumes to what we're doing with this mm -hmm. academy model and them actually seeing themselves in the work. So it's not just about the coursework and taking the classes that you need to graduate and pass the SOLs. It's making certain that you're able to see how what you have chosen in terms of an academy is connected to the contents and subjects that you're studying yeah. in school, then tying that into internships and making it even more practical. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's pretty powerful, and I think that's some of the great work we're doing for Hampton City Schools and for our young people and just having conversations with them. And you spoke to about, you spoke about the uh, keeping the promise in, mm -hmm. in terms of did we make certain we covered all aspects of the portrait of a Hampton graduate. And realistically speaking, if they, if they say no, we want to reflect on what we didn't do and yeah. how can we improve. And we've gotten a lot of feedback and um, um, suggestions and moving forward from young folks who actually graduated and said, it would have been better for me had you all done this. Mm -hmm. and, and being receptive to making the necessary adjustments, I think is pretty powerful and impactful in the work that we do as well. Absolutely. I think that really feeds into this one community, one transformation, mm -hmm. right? It's not that we just sit back and listen to people. I remember like Ford said to us, oh, wait, people talk to you and you're actually listening, right? Yes, That's like yes. this model. Like, no, we want you to be in it with us because it's not just about now, it's about later, right? And the only way we know how to improve later is by the investment now. So so it's not just the investment um, in uh, the business community or just our immediate communities, right? It's all these systems coming together, A, for the betterment of the student, but then also the betterment of each other. Right. And so that one community, one transformation just embodies um, what we're trying to do mm -hmm. here. But the importance, too, though, that we can't do it alone. Absolutely. And, and you always reinforce the concept of making certain we have student voice in there mm -hmm. in everything that we do. And that's not just in <clears throat> creating these experiences, but also reflecting on things that have been done and what we can do differently to improve upon our qualities that we, or characteristics and things that we bring forward to young people as a whole. So mm -hmm. improving our craft and our work as a whole speaks volumes to us being receptive to uh, young people giving us feedback and, and the community as a whole as well. It speaks volumes to, like you mentioned, that one community, one transformation piece. So can you talk a little bit? I know we mentioned the Academy of Law and Public Safety as an example, just based on what your aspirations were in your younger years. <laughs> <laughs> can you give some more examples of other, other academies and pathways that Hampton City Schools offers? Yeah. So basically, so if you think about it, we have 16 academies and 44 pathways. That is, that's phenomenal, right? Um, a lot of communities have what are known pocket academies, so they might have one academy in their, their high school. We have four academies in our high school, in addition to a freshman academy. So all of our academies, no matter which one you go to, they uh, have what we call, t um, we refer to them as quadrants, right? right? And they're driven by industry. So we have information technology, um, business and information technology, we have engineering and technology, we have public service, and we have creative studies. So no matter which high school you go to, you're going to have an academy that embodies that, right? Um, but then At least in, one of those strands. Yeah, at yeah. least one of those strands. And so then you have the opportunity, as we all know, to go to your zoned high school, or you potentially could go to one of the other four high schools, or three high schools in anyone's instances, as well to one of the academy that's more aligned with you and your goals. So you have freshman academy, then you have four college and career academies around those quadrants. And then the academy, which make it, what makes it an academy is that they have these various pathways. And so the scope becomes more narrow. So again, law and public safety would be the big academy. Then you would have various pathways that are indicative of the industry. So law enforcement, law and legal studies, and then fire and EMT, right? So there are the various industries or career fields within the industry, um, bigger picture as well. But the big thing for us is that we want to just 
help students to imagine themselves in different spaces sooner rather than later, and then put appropriate support systems in place to help them reach their goals. I remember one of our favorites, Xavier, remember Xavier? Yes. And we put Xavier, so just so everybody knows, Xavier is one of our ambassadors. Hey, Xavier. Um, but he just, uh, we, we said, I think you picked him, you said him, we were on doing a site visit, so you said him. And so then it's like, hey, you're working with us, right? Yes. So we took Xavier and he was a bit more meek um, young person. And then remember the time, so he started working with us, doing different events with us. He was an ambassador. And then you shared with him that you wanted him to be the keynote speaker at one of the annual partners dinners. Yes. And he said, me? <laughs> and we're like, absolutely you. And he's like, but I don't, I don't, I might stumble on my words or I'm not like a perfect best public speaker. And right. you said, exactly. Well, we're going to work with you. right? Exactly. So what happened there was we saw potential in a young person, right? We built the relationship with the young person to help them see something in themselves that they couldn't yet. But then the beauty was it that remember when he did it, he did that. He went and he was the keynote speaker right. for everything. That sense of empowerment that he felt. And I know you two had a special bond after that because I was we, left we out. We still in keep text. in touch to <laughs> right? this day. We still right. keep in touch. He's in college and it's in his third year in college now. See? So and we, he still remembers that. He still that. connects with me. And when he's home, he'll come by and see me. So it's a great mentor right. mentee type relationship as well and to see him blossom from that and develop a positive sense of self yes. and purpose and yes. leadership and that whole collaboration piece um so i i'm, I'm very proud of the fact that him as an example right. he will tell you yes i embody all the characteristics mm -hmm. outlined in the portrait of a hampton graduate mm -hmm. but you <laughs> also remember the other layer of this so it's not just the students not just the business community it's our, our families right. right and being in relationship with our families like like we're all big one right. big family i remember we called um xavier's dad and basically shared the opportunity with him and the dad was like i don't know he's got football practice and we were like no sir i don't think you're understanding what we're saying to you right now right. i don't think you understand this opportunity so when we shared the opportunity more the father was like oh thank you so much right. and right. he was just as proud he's like may i come we said absolutely. absolutely he said i'm coming from work i said you come as you are mm -hmm. and so just being in that celebratory space with the student with the parent with the business community and us as educators that is just one example of how we're transforming what it means in teach, teaching and learning in Hampton City Schools. But at the end of that all is that shows how you just said right. the student leaves the portrait of a Hampton right. graduate. That's a very powerful example and powerful in terms of the work that we do in impacting young people as well. So we mentioned the Academy of Law and Public Safety, like hospitality and tourism mm -hmm. is another one that has several pathways in that. And I know our main focus is to make certain that we're looking at the industry that yeah. it brings. And you mentioned ensuring that we are creating uh, academies and pathways that are aligned with uh, workforce development, making certain yeah. we are exposing them to industries that will provide them meaningful and gainful employment upon completion of high school or college as a whole. So yep. it's not like we're just creating these academies. It, it is done with intentionality in mm -hmm. terms of saying this is what the workforce is saying we should yes. focus on. And we often talk about preparing young people for jobs that don't yet exist mm -hmm. as well and help, helping them to acquire those skills that we believe will be beneficial for them life lifelong as well. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely um, an equitable driven model informed by industry data. Mm -hmm. So we don't want young people to just have a great time learning. Don't get me wrong. We want them to have a great time learning, but we also want to prepare them for success. So what would we be doing if we're setting young people up in these academies and there truly is no jobs when mm -hmm. they leave us? Like, do we really, we just done this right, little right. Can what is it a carrot not a candle right. a carrot in your face <laughs> and it's not even there we're like teasing you so what we did to base off the academies to decide on the 16th like you said driven by industry data what is industry data telling us where are the current careers but also as a community where are we trying mm -hmm. to go in industry we know numbers tell us one things but then we had to have conversations with right. industry leaders like okay this is what the data is telling us but what are you seeing? Where right. are you trying to go? And that helped to then inform those conversations about the 
college and career academies that should go up. And then, of course, VDOE. Right. And then, of course, everything comes back to the steering. Absolutely. And you go on so, and on and on. And you mentioned college and career academies, so I didn't want to uh, allow you to take a few minutes or moments to talk about the uh, – the college, the Academy of the College Experience at Phoebus High School. And what does that entail? Yeah. What do young people get out of that from being in that particular academy? Yeah, so what they get out of that is an associate's degree. <laughs> 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 they get an associate's degree. So literally, we have young people, which I love about this is that, again, seeing young people, helping them to see themselves in spaces that they don't see themselves, right? We are working with young people who... Um, want to get ahead a little bit, right? Um, and so they enter into what is known as the college experience, so the Virginia Peninsula Community College, College Experience Academy, Academy of the College Experience. And this one, young people have the opportunity to leave with an associate's degree, technically before their high school diploma. But again, it's it's not just... Um, the Val and Sal, right? Because right? so many times uh, we default to a particular student. This is a student that could just with middle of the bubble, as they like to say, middle of the bubble with the right supports and systems around them that they can be very successful. And so we have successfully allowed young people to see themselves, the families to be in support with what's going on here and then help them to move along and get associate's degree before graduating high so school. So these young people get an associate's degree yes. prior to even getting their high school diploma. Yes, at no <laughs> fee to their families. At no cost to their yes. families. And the great partnership we have with uh, Virginia Peninsula Community College uh, speaks volumes to us in this whole one community, one transformation piece as well. Yep. Um, May I share one more thing? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> no, I know you're fine. you got I know we're in time. I, I apologize, public. I apologize. I'm super excited though. Okay, so remember, right, with so one thing we're trying to do, so everyone talks about opportunities and access to our accessible opportunities for young people. So we want our young people to have all the opportunities possible to them. So we've been working, remember, closely with helping young people. So just clarity's sake. You traditionally have to have a 3.0 to be able to take dual enrolled opportunities right. your 11th grade year. So that's the big thing. Um, but we have been working closely with the Virginia Peninsula Community College to see how we can, students that might not be on that 3.0 bubble just yet, but with the right supports, could be, right? And right. so we have started an early academy, um, excuse me, early dual enrollment opportunity where young people rising 10th graders, rising 10th graders can take a summer college course, a summer college course, and then they are um, wrapped around in the support system. So they leave the summer with college credit. Then we're helping them throughout the school year to then uh, learn more about college because they may not see it as an option yet. yet. We wrap them tightly, right. learn more about college, and then we move them on. Once again, it's still in that sense of hope. Yeah. We are targeting the young folks who may not think that they stand a chance at going to college yeah. and letting them see this is something that is doable or attainable for you and providing, like you said, that wraparound support to ensure that they're going to be successful. Right, mm. right. And it's, and I, even when we explain that, I always like I'm a little hesitant because I definitely don't want it to come off like with this deficit mindset, right? right. Oh, the students that don't meet the traditional requirements, because that's not what we're saying. We're right. saying, hey, the traditional requirements need to be adjusted right. because young people can do it, but we just need to reform or reimagine those boundaries and put the right supports right. in and help them make it happen. And I can't say enough about the support we get from Dr. Porter Brandon at oh, uh, yeah. Virginia Peninsula Community College and the partnership we have with them, I think, is just second to none. Yeah. One of the things I did want you to sort of speak about is sort of what young people get from the academies, too. They get Some of them get industry certifications mm -hmm. based on particular academies or pathways that they are associated with. Can you speak a little bit about that as well? Yeah. So, again, the, the thing that goes along with this model, right, so all students have the opportunity for an internship or a job shadow and things of that nature. Some students will choose to have a dual enrollment opportunity, so they'll leave with dual enrolled credits that's relevant to their particular pathway. And then also, in addition to that, certifications. Now, industry will tell you, come to me with X certification and I'm hiring you. Right. Not only am I hiring you, I'm going to pay you 
more because of that certification. But what's important to us is that they're at the table telling us what certifications are relevant to them, not just to have a certification to have one. And so that's what our industry leaders have been telling us. Like this certification is the certification that, hey, we need because we're saving them time, energy, and resources because we're doing it sooner. And then also for our students, we're allowing them to get their foot in the door sooner rather than later to propel forward. So all of our academies and pathways, so those 44 pathways, our goal is for them to have either a stackable um, dual enrolled opportunities or, and I should say, stackable credentials as well. So that's very right. exciting. A lot of the ones that stands out to me is the, what is it, the 911? Oh, yeah, the emergency dispatcher. Right. Yeah. And I know we had quite a few young people from Bethel High School to yep. come out with that certification and go on to get to be gainfully employed yes. with the city from that, uh, just from having that certification as yep. well. And that's a perfect example with um, the Academy of Law and Public Safety. The industry had a need, right? They needed more um, emergency dispatchers. Right. And so we have an valuable resource, right? And so we were able to renegotiate <laughs> what's been done or being done with instruction to help young people prepare, get prepared for that certification. And so just working closely together, we were able to make it happen. And I'm not going to lie to you and make up a number because I don't right, have one right, on the top of my head. Right. But I know we have had, I would say, it's definitely pushing it's over 100 students. I'm going to, it's over 100 students who have done, gone through the emergency dispatching. And then we would have to check and see how many are actually in the field at this point. I know we can talk about this all day. There, there are a couple of things I did want to, uh, want you to talk about for the audience. <laughs> what does it mean to be a Ford Next Generation Learning Community? And I know when we began this work with Ford, it was based on a high school transformation model mm -hmm. with the Academies of Hampton Master Plan 2.0. Um, we have now been designated as a Ford K-12, Ford Next Generation Learning Community, the very first in the nation. So can you talk a little bit about what it means to be a Ford Next Generation Community? Yes. Yeah, so Ford Next Generation Learning is basically that, an organization that wants to reimagine educational systems and not only why we're education, young, educating young people, but how we're educating them. And so they're working with communities, obviously, in America and then also in England, go England, um, as well. So we, of course, were designated a Hampton City Schools High School Academy model, and I think it was around 2017. And so basically that means that Hampton City Schools and the community have come together and committed to reimagining their school systems and structures together to, for the betterment of the students and also industry. So we went through what was a roadmap, right, a roadmap to transform our schools, imagining, visioning, um, implementing, sustaining, or go further, I believe is what they said. And so that was the roadmap for the high school. And so now we are the first first, the first, Ford NGL designated community K-12. And so what I like to share with the community is that once we were on the roadmap, now we are the roadmap. Right, <laughs> so right. We're trying to figure out, right. working together closely, like, okay, how do we align it? But it's not, we're in it together, we're all in it together, and it's backward mapping that portrait of a Hampton graduate. So we do have our roadmap. Instead of it being the Ford NGL roadmap, it's that portrait of a Hampton graduate and backward mapping that through all our grade levels mm -hmm. to ensure that the young people leave the portrait of a Hampton graduate. So now it means that when a young person is in the elementary level, um, they recognize that we are focusing on them being the portrait of a Hampton yeah. graduate starting as early as the elementary years that build into the middle years. And then they're more prepared and informed once they get to high school and, and are able to see the full aspect of what the academy model is about. So it's not a shocker for them by the time they get to high school now mm -hmm. with this master plan 2.0 and the whole backwards mapping behind uh, the portrait of a Hampton graduate. Yeah, as well. Absolutely. We are a small learning um, learning community, right. right? That means we have groups of teachers that work with smaller learning or smaller groups of students, right? right? And they follow each other and they plan together and things of that nature. So we're taking that model, which people know increases a sense of belonging. It helps, it relieves the stress of teachers, right? Because right. they're in partnership with each other. Right. Um, so we're taking that model through all our grade levels as well. So we are, some of it we already work in smaller learning communities at those grade levels, but we're doing that and then with that we will have immersion experiences for our students as well 
Exciting. <laughs> truly, it is truly exciting. I see you looking I, at I, the top. I would be remiss <laughs> if I didn't mention, have you mentioned uh, the floating classroom and the work with Captain Barrington Irving around his flying classroom uh, partnership that we have with them. Yeah. So I know we're doing some exciting things. We actually have a vessel and right. we are creating a classroom model on that vessel. And I know there's some summer internships associated with that. So can you speak a little bit about the, the floating classroom? Right. And so that's always a dangerous meeting, right? You and Captain in the same room yes. <laughs> together, right? <laughs> All the brainstorming that goes on. Yeah. So basically it's exactly that. We have taken um, houseboat. And we're converting it, not we, because I haven't done anything. Our students are converting it with professionals into a STEM plus lab. So they're literally taking a houseboat and wow. they ripped all the stuff out. I, I'm going to be very professional. They ripped all the stuff out, right? And now they're getting ready to start making that into a STEM plus lab for other students, like our younger students, to come on and do different modules, whether it's environmental or whatever the case may be. So we're as a community working together for the betterment of our community. And this is not just one academy. It's several academies or multiple academies, multiple pathways, because you're also seeing how it ties into the various academies and pathways as well. And the students are doing the work firsthand along mm -hmm. with the professionals. So it's not just a group of professionals doing all the work for them and they're just watching it. They're actually hands-on. And the whole practicality of it all, they are thoroughly immersed in the work as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we, of course... And it's paid. paid. It's paid, yes. yes. They get paid to do they this. They get paid. <laughs> Parents, they're getting paid. Don't let them tell you anything differently, right? <laughs> yes, they're getting paid. And again, I think, what's the beauty of this? So that floating classroom really embodies this model, right? It's just something that brings it all together so neatly. Students are developing a marketable skill set. We're bringing different ca academies together, right? So business is coming together students are writing business plans. There's marketing plans going on. We have engineering that's going on. So they're all coming together across the academies and the quadrants to produce something, right? To produce something for themselves, but also to produce something for the community. And so that's just, I simply put, if you think of the floating classroom, the floating classroom is the one community, one transformation in a floating classroom format. <laughs> it sounded better in my head. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't, say enough about how exciting this work is mm -hmm. and, and more importantly, the impact that it's making on young people. I certainly appreciate all the work that you do as the director of the Academies of Hampton and in your leadership as well. I've enjoyed working with you for however many years we've been working <laughs> together and looking forward to the exciting things to come that will uh, continue to take Hampton City Schools to an even higher level. We are the pioneers for this work as we look at this whole K-12 transformation model with with Ford Next Generation Learning and how we are designated as a K-12 learning community as a whole, the very first in the nation. Yeah. Uh, definitely ex an exciting time in Hampton City Schools. I'm, I'm looking forward to the school year starting, and I know you are as well. And to our listeners, remember, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. As one community, one transformation, we ensure academic success for every child, every day, whatever it takes. Until next time. Listen to learn more about Hampton City Schools. New episodes of HCS Talks drop on Thursdays. Subscribe and listen to HCS Talks. HCS Talks is a Hampton City Schools production.